Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to discuss about publishing a REST service through a Mendix application. Publishing a REST service is one of the most easiest ways of creating APIs using Mendix. It allows us to create JSON messages with the data that's stored in our database or that you generate through the application. In today's tutorial, we are just going to build on top of our ongoing data grid two hacks tutorial Mendix application which also covers the deep link portion of it. So if you haven't watched that video, the link will be in the description for both the videos. And also to get access to this Mendix application, um, click in the click the URL in the description below of this video and submit your Mendix developer account email so that I can share this application with you. So let's get started, right? Um, let's first look at the application we have built if someone's watching this video for the first time so the ep example that we have been building in this application is uh just have city uh have a list of cities and then temperature for it so uh, let's go to edmonton that's where i live in so if you see we just uh just randomly generated data here um so if you see this is um there are the data grid two is default sorted by dates in descending order <coughs> and as we go we have description temperature change so the way we have done it is in the first two tutorials is if you sort the data by temperature the change column is hidden um, but if you unsort the data it comes back uh, we created filters so um, if we filter dates by a couple of days and then Mendix doesn't give us the, or let's also look at the code so that we have the shorter or smaller amount of data. Um, and the temperature, maybe let's do it as greater than 50. Okay, so when we have this data now, if we want to remove all the filters and all the sorting that's applied on the data, there is no direct reset button that Mendix has. So in our first video we also went through this um hack where you just have you can create this reset button one click of this reset button it um resets your whole data grid and it also removes all the filters so that's this over here um <clears throat> and then we went through deep links how to set up deep links through uh through the portal here and how to use them so that's about this application but so yeah, we have city and its temperature, basically. That's the application for us, right? So, so say you want, if this, you, you're you using this as a huge service and you want this data to be available to external systems as well, it could be your own uh, different applications or just opening it to the public, right? So you can give out this data to other applications or other people to use through REST APIs. Now, how do we build REST APIs in Mendix? You can start by first defining a structure of what you want. So first, let me show the domain model. So here, the domain model has city names uh, and city and zip code. That's the only thing I'm storing, but you could have more data. And then the weather data is date, uh, description, temperature, and change, right? So these are the basic things that we want in our, uh, in our application, where someone searches for a, <clears throat> searches for a data or searches for temperature data with a city name, then we should be able to re return all the weather objects that's associated to that city. And to do that, uh, first we start with the JSON um, structure on what we are going to return to the user. So <clears throat> our first object will be the city name, we return the same city name as they had requested. So if they requested data for Edmonton, we would return that same name over here, uh, Edmonton zip code, and then, all the weather objects that we have will be in this JSON array. And it will have a date in date time format, a description as a string, temperature as a decimal, and change as a decimal. Right? So you can see these data types here as well. <clears throat> now this is just a structure that um, your export mapping will be able to use to, to generate uh, dynamic data or all the, all the data that's stored in your in your application so if you look at this structure this is we're just going and selecting the json structure that we had created as a 
as a base for it, right? And based on this, it will create an export map where again you map it to the to your domain model object so that your export map knows what data to get from and where, and then it'll convert that into the JSON that's exported to or that's written through the API. Now it takes the city in as a parameter. And based on that city, it'll fetch all the weather object associations and put them into a JSON. And how do we use this export map is <clears throat> we use it through a microflow. Uh, the microflow, what it would do for us is it will take the, so this microflow is again used by the REST service that you have created, right? So uh, for now, just ignore these two HTTP request and response, but say we get a city name uh, from the query parameters of the REST URL, right? So once we get the city name, uh, we check if the city name is available or not, right? If the user is sent in and the city name is empty or an empty string, right? So if it is not available, we give, we return this response, say it's a 400 error with city parameters or city parameter empty and then an error over here. <clears throat> That's a JSON string. Um, if the city name is available, we check in the database if we have data for that city or not. Uh, if the city is available, then we go ahead and do the rest. But if it is not available, what we do is we change the, um, we send a different HTTP response. Instead of 400, we send a 201 now saying, oh, uh, you sent us a current request, but we do not have this city in our database. And it just goes as a warning that says city not found. So now these are the two scenarios where we couldn't work. But when something is available, if it's a happy path scenario, what we do is we use the export mapping we just created and we pass the city name as a as a parameter here, right? The city we received as a query parameter, we pass it on. And once we do that, your, um, your export map will be able to create a big JSON and store it as a string variable Right? And we just give it a name as response. And then <clears throat> we again change the response, HTTP response, and as a 200, and the reason phase is a success. And then the content we pass is the is all the JSON that was created in this response string. So this is how you handle an incoming request. But how do you build a request? So to build a, um, or how do you build a, an API endpoint, right? So to build an API endpoint, we use the weather rest. Uh, we've created a published rest service. So you can just right click, um, go to add other, and do the published rest service over here. And that will help you uh, create a web uh, a rest service, right? And <clears throat> the way we do it is just give it a name, some uh, service name. So I've given it as weather rest service. And then once you have a service name, you can add multiple resources here. So this could be, um, uh, this is a weather resource, right? But I could add another resource that's just a city. So it will it can return you a list of the city names. So all the resources that goes, or operations that go inside this weather resources will have slash weather slash. And then you, the other name you can give is city. So you cannot, you'll not be able to change this um, change this. So this AT80 and slash API slash V1, right, comes from this over here, this general service name. And then the weather comes from the resources that you added in the left panel here. And then the name city comes from what you have given as an operation path over here, right? And then if you have multiple query parameters or one query parameter, it comes in as a, as a query parameter here. And whatever name you give here will be passed onto the onto the microflow as a city name. So uh, it's pretty simple to build a REST service over here. And once you do that, you can also select what microflow needs to be called to return data after someone clicks or after someone hits your endpoint, right? So that's it's this simple uh, to return the weather object you have created four different. Um, uh, four different activities over here and that should be that should do the job for us so um, 
So let's look into the working first. And the great thing about Mendix is it gives, it creates Swagger documentation for you by default. So you don't have to go and create documentation manually to give it to your um, other teammates or publish it, right? So as soon as you click on this link, it will take you to the Swagger documentation here. And it will say that, oh, what's the API and all those things, right? So because we are doing this, so it's simple, right? It says, oh, the API name is slash weather slash city. And once we have that, what we do is you just have to give it a city name. So let's say we want to click first, try it out. So if you want to try this API, you hit try it out. Now, say we send it an empty city name. That's the first scenario that we had, right? In this microflow. So say we do not send a city name. What happens in that case is if you execute without city name, it says, so it says it's a 400 error, right? Which means it's a bad request. And uh, we did send some content, but it's not displaying the content over here. But if we, if we look at this through Postman, it will show us the content as well. Um, that's, so that's the first flow. Now, second is we give it a city name we enter a city name, but it will return a 201 because the city wasn't found. So say on my application, you've seen that we have only Edmonton and Calgary over here, but say we want, you just check for um, Toronto, right? And say execute. Now in that case, you get a 201, which says city not found. So that's this, um, this second flow over here which says city not found right this flow and now we go to the all success path so that would be uh let's pass in as edmonton so now when you execute using edmonton you get the list of uh list of the whole whole data and you can also go and download everything through swagger um let's look at the same through through postman how you would do it so so open up postman and i've already created this collection here but <clears throat> but say you've given a city name where so i don't want to pass in any city name and i'll just send it as empty so again it gives us an error saying city parameter empty right so in swagger it did not the swagger documentation did not show there but um postman shows everything now I can let's give this Toronto and you'll see that the return was uh, was a 201 here and say it's city not found. And then if you do Edmonton, send us the whole list of Edmonton over here. So you can also uh, copy all the data and everything. But yeah, this is so this is how easy it is to <coughs> publish a REST service from Mendix application and consume a REST service from a Mendix application. So yeah, again, if you guys want access to this application, um, hit the link in, in the description below, figure, send me your email address, and then I will add you in the application for in probably less than 24 hours. So I try to do my best over there. Um, but yeah, uh, and there'll be more videos coming soon on, on multiple different topics, right? So, so yeah, subscribe and keep listening and yeah, keep practicing. Thank you everyone.